Arthur Streeton is one of our best known and most loved artists. He was one of the Australian Impressionists, part of the movement known as the Heidelberg School. He adored the beauty of the Dandenong Ranges, just east of Melbourne. In the 1920s, he bought five hectares here, named it Long Acres, and went on to establish a beautiful garden. Used to say, I can almost not pull myself away from the garden to do a bit of painting. <laughs> it was, as music, the, you know, a triad of great loves in Arthur Streeton's life. Julie Dodd Streeton is the current owner of Long Acres. Her late husband, Roger, was Arthur's grandson. Julie knows the history of the property and the Streeton family, including Arthur's Canadian wife, Nora. She was a child musical prodigy, an excellent violinist, and as an early teenager, she was sent to Germany to study. She studied with the very famous teacher, Joachim, and she was independently wealthy played for crown heads. She knew Tchaikovsky, she knew Debussy. She was a, a remarkable wow. person. Nora was a bit reluctant to settle in Australia and they settled in Turak in a rather grand house that Nora had funded. I think it rather irked him that his wife was uh, financially the, the one who provided all. And in 1924, he sold his great picture, Golden Summer, for a thousand guineas, then a record price, and he spent every penny building this property, uh, the, the main house, in a Canadian lake style to appeal to Nora, and in particular the Linden Walk to remind Nora not only of North America, but also of her time in Germany. Uh, Where and, there are avenues of, of uh, uh, linden trees. Exactly. Yes. And I think it's rather moving because, mm. in a way, you can see the garden as a kind of love letter written in foliage and flowers and plants mm. that Arthur Streeton created to lure his sophisticated wife <laughs> to the Australian bush. <laughs> <laughs> all done to his own design and uh, with his own participation. And it's free form, as you would mm. expect an artist garden to be. Mm. Arthur was always looking to make a bit of money if he could. He had the idea of planting a cash crop of Douglas pines for yacht masts, but he really couldn't win because, you know, just as they were coming into maturity, yacht masts changed to <laughs> metal. So it still stands there and it's a beautiful haven for the birds. And it's lovely. It is. After Arthur's death, Long Acres changed little until Julie's husband, Roger Streeton, took over in 1996. He was an engineer, a mayor of Kew and Keen Gardener. And Roger put in the apple walk, which grows heritage apples. Wonderful. If you can protect them from the birds, well No, and good. no, you never get to eat any of them yourselves. <laughs> no, but you it, share them with the birds. It's, it looks good. <laughs> and then you must enjoy working here. It's, it's an absolute privilege yeah. to work. Since Roger passed away, the garden is cared for by nurseryman and gardener Craig Wilson. This is my copy of what I'd imagine Streeton would have planted. The agapanthus, look, they're a shocking weed, everybody knows that, mm. but, but if you deadhead them and they don't self-seed, then they're something that can be controlled. That's right. Yeah. And then you've got the wonderful bulbs of the lilliums at the, the back. The lilies, of course, Streeton oh. adored and, and painted. Oh, did he? So they, which okay. is why we've planted them. That is an enormous size, great height to yes, it. Yes, this Leslie Woodruff is a good one, isn't it? It's a big, is. strong grower. It is. And yeah. then this lovely yellow one? Conquador. That's a magnificent yeah. and one. They, they'll get much bigger than that. Oh, it's yeah. wonderful. Aren't they extraordinary? So amongst other plants, they do very well, don't they? They like it to be, yeah, scrambling in amongst things mm. and, and supported. Mm. Yeah. That really is picture-perfect, isn't it? It's a very cute building, isn't it? What is it? It's the gardener's cottage. Oh, dear. Now, you don't live there, do you? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wishing and hoping. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rockeries, that's got a history to it too. The rockeries, I think, are uh, have a conservation order on them because mm. Streeton made them. And he would have planted them up with lots of different plants. Uh, he would have been growing alpine plants. That's as they did. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the hydrangea up there is, that's a spectacular one. That, that's a paniculata mm. grandiflora. It's a beauty, isn't it? And yes, you've pruned it so it's 
sort of more lifted up. That's right, and, and, and also I prune it every year so that you get the big flowers, because it flowers on the tips. Yes. That's quite an avenue of hydrangeas, this, Aren't they isn't magnificent? It? Yeah, we they love really the hydrangeas, and, and because of the acid soil, uh, they're so blue. And you have to keep them pruned, though. They get pruned every year, wow, yes. Wow, yeah. they're really electric blue. Now, yeah. explain about this tree, though. Oh, this is the New Zealand red beech, which got lonely it's, and died. You know, they like to be squashed in. Look, seedling popped up. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? It's looking <laughs> very well. There are some spectacular trees here. The trees are unbelievably beautiful. Mm. The Rabinias mm. are absolutely my favourites. There's not a straight line on them. They're the, so curved. They are. The yeah. trunks are here, there, That's and everywhere. That's right, yeah, and, mm. and the bark is so beautifully cracked. Mm. Magnificent-looking oak trees. The oaks, well, cool. the, the, the English oaks were all from acorns collected from the Botanic Gardens hey, by, by Arthur Street. And, really? Yes. Put some in his pocket and brought them up here. That's right, fantastic, yeah. And off isn't they it? went, yeah. yeah. It's really a lovely, lovely spot. It's the dream job, isn't it, for a gardener? I hope that Long Acres always remains as it is, you know, a place of beauty and peace, and I hope all people are able to enjoy its beauty. One last thing. You remember Golden Summer's Eaglemont, sold in 1924 for 1,000 guineas? Well, in 1995, the National Gallery of Australia bought it for three and a half million dollars. Wouldn't Arthur have loved to be able to tell Nora that? <laughs>